If you've been here before, you know that this is a pretty typical card for me. A pretty background in bright colors with lots of white and black accents, a black matte, a black sentiment, even black embellishments. I thought it would be fun to switch it up and make black cardstock the star of the show today and use some old favorites as well as a couple of new to me products that gave me some amazing and surprising results. Let's start easy. I've got a couple of panels of black cardstock. The first one I ran through a geometric embossing folder to give me some dimension and angles, and the other one's just flat, plain cardstock. To transform the black a little bit, I used a trick I use on pretty much every card I make. Some iridescent shimmer spray, which adds some sparkle as well as almost a green tinge to that black cardstock, and then some gold splatter with my metallic watercolors. And then I thought, hey, why not? And I added splatter in some of my other colors, blue, purple, and red. They really show up well on the black cardstock. Now I'm going to come back to all my cards at the end. Next, I've got another panel embossed with a 3D embossing folder. And this time I rubbed some ink over top of it, but not just any ink. This is Lisa Horton Hybrid Interference Ink. It is so cool. It actually changes color depending on whether you use it on white or black cardstock. First, I ran the golden sun shimmer over top of the cardstock. Look how it glows and emphasizes that pattern. This ink is quite orange on white cardstock, and then it shows up as gold on black. I pounced it down lightly onto the cardstock. I didn't want to squish it too much and get it down in the crevices, just on the areas that have been pushed up by the embossing folder. I liked it so much I wanted to try another color, so I just flipped it over and grabbed the Summer Garden Shimmer. This one's green on white paper and then blue on the black. This gave me a moodier look, but it's also really pretty. And I love how it brings out the patterns in the 3D embossing. For my next technique, I stenciled with the four colors of this ink that I have. I used an old stencil from Waffle Flower that has quadrants of petals, so I could put one color in each quadrant. I started with that Golden Sun Shimmer and then the Summer Garden. Next, I went to Cherry Bomb, which is red on white cardstock and pinky purple on black. And then finally, I went to Mermaid Lagoon, which is blue on white paper and purple on black. I turned and shifted the stencil, putting the same color in each quadrant of the stencil so that all four quarters of my cardstock will have the four colors when I'm finished. This cardstock is six by eight and a half inches, and you'll see the advantage that gave me later on when I finished the cards. Here's the finished pattern on the black. You can really see the shimmer these inks give. And as you saw earlier, I also did the pattern on white, so you can get a sense of the difference these inks have on the two colors of cardstock. Next, I thought I would try ink smooshing with the inks onto the black cardstock. Nothing unusual here. Just press the ink pad onto my glass mat, spritz with some water, and pick it up with the cardstock. The black cardstock picks up the shimmer from the inks as well as some of the colors. I tried both with and without drying the black cardstock in between my layers, and in the end, I got a nice, shimmery, colorful panel. I think it would work really well for a night sky. Another thing I thought would be interesting was a gel plate technique with some acrylic shimmer paints. I went with a technique I know I like on white cardstock, and I laid down three colors on my 5x7 gel plate. I used my 6-inch brayer to spread them out over the plate, and then I laid down my black cardstock on top. I pulled that off, and it's pretty. The paint was beating up a little bit on the plate, so you can definitely see the black cardstock showing through. I decided to add a layer with a stencil, so I put three more dabs of paint, and I brayered them out. But this time I went horizontal before putting down a geometric stencil. I decided to use some white cardstock to take off the paint from the holes of the stencil. This is one of the things I love about gel printing. Even when I'm planning to make one print, I end up with a few backgrounds for future cards. I removed this stencil and then I put my black cardstock back in place. And when I pulled that, I got a very subtle print of the stencil. I had hope for more definition, so I thought I'd try another layer. I rolled out the paint horizontally again, and I added the stencil, but this time I used my black cardstock to try and get that paint out of the holes of the stencil. Again, I'm getting some texture from the design, but I'm not loving this. I used my white cardstock to pull the rest of the paint off the gel plate, and that's more what I was looking for, but with my black cardstock. But this is a great background I can keep for future cards, plus I have my roll-off sheet, which has a great blend of my paint colors. Next, I went back to my metallic watercolors. I spritzed a panel of black cardstock with some water, just lightly, 
I want it to be damp enough that the watercolors I put on don't immediately dry into the paper. I started with gold, which you can see is amazingly bright and beautiful. And then I added some other colors until my whole panel was covered. I gave the whole thing another spritz of water and then I crinkled up some clear plastic wrap over top. You want this really wrinkly so the paint will dry in the form of the plastic wrap and give you some great texture. After it had dried for a while, I pulled back the plastic wrap and check that out. It's so pretty. Another thing you can do with black cardstock is heat emboss on it. And if you heat emboss with clear powder, you get a really neat shiny tone on tone look. I prepared my cardstock with some anti-static powder and then I used a new floral background stamp with my wow embossing ink and wow clear embossing powder. I heated up my heat gun and then applied the heat to the panel while it was in my foil lined shoebox lid. I find this helps in a couple of ways. First of all, I'm not holding onto the cardstock with my fingers while I'm embossing, so my fingers are safely away from all that heat. Second, the foil distributes the heat evenly and it generally reduces the warping I get while I'm heating the cardstock. Once it was cool, I wiped away the extra anti-static powder with a microfiber cloth. And that's a really neat look right there. You could use it like that. But I watched Christina watercolor this stamp before Christmas, which is actually why I have it. So I thought since I have these great metallic watercolors, I would give it a try. Well, I learned something about myself while I was doing this. Watercoloring takes too long, especially for a multi-card video like this one. Maybe I'll try it again another day when I've got more time. But this time I ended up grabbing the pink and red and gold and just washing over the whole panel. So let's just go with saying that you can do emboss resist on black cardstock as well. And we'll call that a day. Okay, now for the cards. Let's go way back. I'll put the names of the products I used on the screen so you can see. And if they're not retired, they'll all be in the supply list below in the description. This one's going to be my Valentine for my daughter. This card uses the plain black panel that was spritzed with shimmer spray and splattered with the watercolor paints, along with a heart and strips that were cut from the gel printed panel that I didn't love. And that's a great tip. Any panel you don't like well enough to use as one piece can work great as die cut accents on another card. This one's going to be my Valentine for my son. This is the one where I use the geometric embossed panel, which adds some subtle dimension. I picked up on the gold with a narrow gold frame, along with a happy birthday sentiment that has a similar line weight. Next, I used that other embossed panel that I had run ink over. Remember I had orange on one side and blue on the other? Well, I cut it and I flipped the top over so I could get both colors on one card. Pretty clever, right? Then I used the plastic wrap panel to cut a frame. And then from the center of the panel, I cut my sentiment words, which I backed onto white shadows. This is a great way to get more out of one panel of any kind of special background you've created or specialty card stock. I think this is a perfect masculine birthday card. Now here's that black card with the stenciling. I added watercolor splatter to this one and I cut it with a frame die that cuts out those little half circles around the edges. I added a script sentiment on an angle, again with a white shadow to add both some brightness and to make the sentiment easier to read. And remember I had that longer panel when I was stenciling? I was able to create another card with the rest of it. This time I added a white sentiment and some white dot die cuts, both as centers to the petals as well as embellishments around the sentiment. Next I used the ink smoosh panel. I tried so hard, but I just couldn't pick up the shimmer in the photos. It almost looks like black shimmery marble in real life. This time I used one of my favorite geometric dies. Well, actually I used several since I went back and bought a few more to make creating a card like this go much faster. I cut the shape from black, gold, and white and the smooshed cardstock, and then I mixed and matched to create this elegant pattern. And finally, my watercolored masterpiece. I love how the black lines of the stamp show through the shimmery paints and how the big white sentiment brightens up the card. So don't be afraid of the dark. Even if you don't want full black panels, you can easily cut them down to use as smaller elements. Is there something here that you want to try? Let me know in the comments below. I definitely want to play a bit more with those interference inks and see what else can be done with them. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.